actually comes from a very privileged family. The father was the first Menteri Besar of Johor. He grew up with the children of the sultans and went to boarding school in England at the age of nine or ten and spent ten years in England. But he came back and grew into an extremely confident young man who spoke his mind, who had supreme self-confidence. The plan is we're going to have a union of Malaya in place of the fragmented structure that had existed before. And we're also going to have a common citizenship. McMichael goes on to one ruler after another, but they all have misgivings. They all are reluctant. When news about the McMichael Treaty came out, the Malays were outraged. Their sultans, who were supposed to be the protectors of the Malays, you know, had signed away their own sovereignty. The Malayan Union sort of shocked the Malays into suddenly realising that they were, if not already colonised, about to be colonised. That really galvanised the Malays and several Malay parties and movements and groups were established at that time to fight the Malayan Union. The consequences of the Second World War made the Malays awake politically. The Malays may be pampered, lazy, indolent, but when they know they were driven to the war, they fought back. They needed a charismatic leader, they needed a fearless leader to make this clarion call across the country to bring everyone together. Dato On had established himself as this Malay man who was fearless and peerless in his eloquence, in his critical thinking. He had that voice that nobody else had. What did take the British by surprise was the rapidity and the organisation of a popular Malay opposition to the Malayan Union. They had an emergency meeting of the Malay Congress and they unanimously resolved get the sultans to boycott the installation. Dato On and a few other Malay leaders went to see the sultans and Dato On convinced them that this was the wrong decision, that they are going to lose the support of the Malays if they went ahead and be there at the installation of Edward Gent. When Dato On got the sultans to finally agree that they will not go to the installation, he then brought the sultans to the balcony to look at the crowd outside. It seems some of the sultans cried to see thousands of Malays putting out their arms, supporting the sultans for their agreement. The phones were ringing in the station hotel. The British were asking, where are the sultans? Only someone with Dato On's supreme confidence who could handle and say, well, they're not going, <laughs> you know? So the Malayan Union was really a dead duck, in effect, with the boycott 